What I'm going to show you here is a running lead that is designed to only dump the lead when absolutely necessary. This makes it a universal running rig that can be used in just about any carp angling situation. I'm going to create a breakaway lead and I'm going to use a very old fashioned technique called a rotten bottom that I learned from sea fishing. To make the lead free leader version, I'm just going to grab one that I made earlier. So this is a very standard lead free leader. This is the 40 pound Klingon. It's just got a ring swivel uh, made up on there and it's the sort of thing that you might buy off the shelf. So for this, I'm going to use a shock bead and you notice on the shock bead, you've got a, a big bore this side and then we've got a shallow dish the other side. And I want to put the needle in through the shallow dish side. I just hook the lead free leader onto a needle and slide the bead over. And then that goes all the way down. And that is what is going to sit over the swivel. So it should sit like this. And the barrel of that swivel just disappears inside that shock bead there. That's how it's meant to go. Then I need a six mil shock bead. It doesn't really matter which way around you thread that on. And that gets slid all the way up until it sits above the buffer bead. For the swivel, you could just use a regular size eight ring swivel like that. I'm going to grab a little micro ring swivel. Next thing we need is a simple swivel pair lead. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the swivel off this lead so that we're just left with a single loop. To make the rotten bottom connection, we're going to need some lightweight mono. Now you need to choose the mono depending on what you're doing. If you want to cast 80, 90 yards, you're going to need a mono of yeah about seven, eight pounds, something like that. That should withstand the force of that kind of cast very easily with some safety margin. If you cast in 50, 60 yards, then I found three pound line, no problem. If you're fishing a very weedy situation and it's imperative that that lead ejects and gets dumped if the fish becomes weeded, then you might want to drop that down to 1.5, 1.7 pound bottom, something like that. For the sort of fishing I'm doing at the moment, I've chosen some eight pound mono and I need 15 centimeters of that. Take the lead and thread the mono through the top loop. Fold the mono roughly in two to even up the tag ends. Take your ring swivel and just pass that end through one of the tag ends and let the swivel slide down to touch the lead. Holding both the tag ends, make a simple overhand loop and pull both tag ends like that. That creates a basic loop. To make that loop small and neat, just pull those tag ends and close down the loop. Take the tag ends once more and repeat that knot. So we've got two overhand knots on top of one another. Cut the tag ends off really neatly. Take the swivel and thread it onto the lead free leader. And that's the finished lead system. Don't forget, if you have to use a very lightweight mono for the rotten right bottom, you can always add some PVA tape to enable you to cast that extra distance. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to break that uh, rotten bottom connection. You know, that could be trapped between some rocks or stuck in some weed or something. And if I just pull on the leader here, you know, you'd be pulling from the rod end and just fingertip, bunk, and that's off. Really not much force at all. Obviously in that situation, you lose the lead, but if you're playing the fish, you're just going to land the carp with that without the lead and if you just got the lead trapped you just wind that in tie a new lead on and go again if you need to cast over 60 yards up to 80 90 whatever uh, you can use exactly the same material so you still use eight pound mono and we'll still use the same amount of length of it we're going to go through the lead and through the swivel twice this makes extra sure that the rotten bottom is safe for casting but will still break at a low force. I'm still just going to do the two overhand knots there. You can add three if you're really worried. All depends on what you're doing. The point of this entire system is that it's tunable to various different situations. So this rig gives you the best of both worlds. It gives you all the advantages of running rigs, but it enables you to fish them in situations that perhaps a running rig wouldn't normally be suitable for. 
If you've never used running rigs before, you might be forgiven for being a bit unsure as to how well they work. They work phenomenally well. So when a cart picks that up, lead's gonna stay stationary like that and pass through the leader. You might say, well, how, how is that hooking the fish? You know, there's not a lot of force being applied there. You've got all of the line under the water and you've got water pressure pushing down on that. You might have a back lead in there. You've got the tension of the clutch and you've got to remember that mono is basically just a massive elastic band. So if I take a metre of mono there and just give it a little tweak, I can move that probably about two, three centimetres with just a couple of pound of force. So a piece of mono is a massive elastic band. So what you've got is the carp moving away and the further he pulls, the tighter that elastic band is pulling. So if we pretend that, that my palm there is the fish's mouth, when the fish picks that up, hook turns over and if I just put a little bit of tension there to simulate the elasticity, the drag on the line and the clutch, that hook is being pulled tighter and tighter in there. I'm not putting much pressure on here at all. You've got the lead staying stationary, and when the carp tries to shake that out, I mean, I'm letting all this go slack, but it wouldn't actually go slack in a fishing situation just because of this elastic effect that you've got. It's very, very difficult for the carp to shake it out. And what you find is that the, the takes are absolutely solid. You know, you'll just go from nothing to bobbing, locked at the top, chomping at the blank, and they're on, they are not dropping off. All you've got to do, walk up to the rod, wind down, lift into him, and it's game on. If everyone on your water is fishing traditional lead clips, then I'd absolutely move over to a simple running rig system like this. The carp find it very difficult to deal with, and you'll definitely convert more chances. It means that you don't have to drop a lead every time either. You'll only drop the lead when it's absolutely necessary. When using lead-free leaders in combination with running rigs, just tie a standard mainline knot. I've used a five-turn uni knot or a simple grinner knot here, and that produces a very neat small knot, and the swivel of the lead just flies over that. Lovely. Don't whatever you do, tie a swivel or a quick link or put a split shot on the main line above that swivel because what you're going to do is make a, a rig that's dangerous. Let's have a look at how to do a simple rig tube inversion of this setup. I've got some tungsten rig tube and I've got the main line already threaded through it. I'm going to use a helicopter sleeve for this. Now obviously helicopter sleeves are normally used for helicopter rigs but you can actually make this product both do helicopter rigs and running rigs with a little tweak. If you're going to use this helicopter sleeve, it's important to use a quick change uni swivel to make this next connection. A normal ring swivel won't work. I'm going to connect this with a simple five turn half blood knot. For the rig, I've gone for a simple 12 pound mono hook link. This is the 12 pound zig flow. Just a little short anti-tangle sleeve slipped over there and a simple uh, loop tied here. Just slide the anti-tangle sleeve over the quick change swivel and then fully pull the swivel home like that. This creates a fully stiff section, which makes this rig very anti-tangle. So that's the lead system finished. The reason why I've been very specific on matching this helicopter sleeve with this helicopter swivel is that I find that uh, if you put a ring swivel on there, this can sometimes jam. By combining a rotten bottom with a running rig, you're just able to use a running rig safer in more situations.